Now, mycoplasma genitalium is is the um, is the simplest known uh, truly living thing. I don't count viruses as living because they can't reproduce. They can't make copies of themselves. They have to use a, a more complicated cell and take over the cell's machinery to, to reproduce. Now, mycoplasma can reproduce by itself, so that's why I call that a really, a truly living organism, while viruses are not living. Now, mycoplasma, although it's the simplest self-reproducing cell, it has 482 genes, and each of these genes has uh, um, over half a million letters worth of information. If we were to write out the information in the gene of even a mycoplasma, it'd take me a huge book to, to put it in. Okay, so this is the simplest life, and that's supposed to have got here by time and chance in a primordial soup. Yet somehow this is like saying an explosion in a printing press produced uh, an encyclopedia to get all the information there. Now the thing is, mycoplasma is in fact a very simple thing. In fact, it's so simple it can't even make a lot of the things it needs to survive, so it has to get them from more complicated organisms. It's called a parasite. It causes things like pneumonia and, and various other things because it can't get the information, the, the, the nutrients it needs, so it has to get from something even more complicated. So even a mycoplasma really couldn't be the first living thing because it can't exist without these more complicated things. And that's a huge problem for uh, explaining the origin of first life by what's called chemical evolution. That's the theory that life came from non-living chemicals. The point is that if evolution can't even get started, then it couldn't have occurred and it's dead in the water.